So Hellbender, um, you know, I was saying that the rock horror crossover isn't that rare. Well, as if to prove a point. Here's another one. Here's another one, although, you know, in a slightly different way. So Hellbender, not to be confused with The Hellbenders, which is a Western, um, the original Italian title, of which I can't remember, but... Um, and there's also a 2012 horror comedy called Hellbenders. The setup of this is kind of like Carrie meets the village via Midsommar and uh, Witchfinder General. 16-year-old Izzy lives alone in the woods, in a house in the woods with her mum. They are strict vegetarians. They live on pine cones and berries. Oh, gosh. I mean, exactly. It's like... Harsh. Harsh. Very, very harsh. They have a kind of punky goth metal band, which is the thing that they do for recreation. She play, Izzy plays drums and her mum plays bass. And they do these, you know, songs about... You know, you know the sort of... Pine cones! Yeah, that's right. Berries! And... Um, so we start off with when they've got and they they get up they got all this kind of face makeup all this you know the kind of Marilyn Manson look and everything, but they keep themselves to themselves. At one point, the mother says, "I've got to go into town to get some stuff. Do you want anything?" And Izzy says, well, "I'd like to come into town." The mother says, "Yeah, you, you know you can't come into town." And the reason she can't is she's been told that she has to stay away from people because she's sick, and therefore she cannot come into contact with anyone. The truth is, she's dangerous, as indeed was her mother as indeed is a generation. Now, this is not a plot spoiler because the film begins with a scene of some of witch hunters stringing somebody up who then essentially bursts into flames and flies off into the night. So right. we know at the beginning that there is something witchy and magical in the background. But that's all we know. We kind of know, OK, so this story is somehow connected with that. The mum appears to have powers which she appears to be keeping in check. However, Izzy is 16. She is a teenager. She has played in a goth punk band with her mum on their own for long enough. So she goes out through the forest, over the hill, and comes across a house where she meets some other people, some other teenagers, sitting around a pool doing teenage stuff. Here's a clip. In celebration of our new friend and her first tequila shot, I will place in one of these cups, not the typical dead worm you'd find at the bottom of a bottle, but a real, live, bloody bodacious earthworm. Drink up. I'm vegetarian. You were a vegetarian. Now you're a wormitarian. Oh, come on, guys. Leave her alone. I'll have the worm. No, them's the rules. You get the worm, you eat the worm. Come on, kid. It'll give you superhuman strength. Hold your nose. You won't even taste it. So she's had a you know a shot, but more importantly, she's tasted flesh. Uh oh! Oh, I see. It, oh, <laughs> it's a it's a vegan propaganda movie. <laughs> see, don't go don't go touching that flesh. Now here's what's interesting. So the film is on Shudder, and the it's very the film is actually in terms of its creation very much a family affair. Mother and daughter are played by Toby Poser. I hope I'm saying that surname correctly, and and Zelda Adams, who are mother and daughter. They both also co-writers. The girl who Izzy meets is played by her sister and the film is directed by their dad, John Adams, who also appears in the film and whenever anybody isn't in a scene they all do other things so everybody takes a turn behind the camera and it turns out that they've been doing this for quite a while. 
They've made films which I haven't seen called Rumble Strips, Halfway to Zen, and The Deeper You Dig, which is now, which apparently is a real breakthrough and is on Shudder. And I'm going to watch that now as a result of seeing it. That sounds this. like a fairly unique yeah, doesn't it? Uh, take on on making a movie. I haven't heard that. Yeah, it's it's ever before. It is well, me neither. And I didn't know it when I was watching the film because I'd like to see films cold. And actually, funnily enough, Simon Poole said, "Oh, you should you know have a look at this." And I saw so I knew nothing about it at all, other than it turned up in my inbox and I watched it. Uh, I thought it was really interesting. Um, Toby Prezer has a touch of the of that strange magic of, um, is it Millie Perkins? Millie Perkins from The Witch Who Came From The Sea. I think it's Millie Perkins. And also some of the magnetic power of Piper Laurie in Carrie. You remember in Carrie when Piper Laurie plays the mother? And in fact, at the beginning, you think that this is what's going on, mm-hmm. that it's, that it's you know, some kind of weird religious cult in which you're trying to keep your... That's why I mentioned the thing about The Village, the M. Night Shyamalan film. It's then it's got the kind of woodsy 70s feel of... Last House on the Left, and I mean there was a there was a number of movies around that period which had that kind of woodland horror feeling. I mean, to some extent, people would connect Deliverance with it, and but you, Last House on the Left is the big one. And it also had that kind of retro seventies feel of that film I talked about a little while ago called Antrim, in which the it's it's a it's a faux documentary, and the documentary stuff isn't very good. But at the centre of it is a film that's meant to have been made in the seventies, a cursed film that's disappeared, and everyone who's watched this cursed film, terrible things have happened to them. And in the middle of Antrim, the film, they actually show Antrim, and although the documentary, the faux documentary stuff doesn't work, the film Antrim is really really odd. It also has these trippy sequences that reminded me of. In the Earth, and like In the Earth, the Ben Wheatley film, this was made during lockdown. So it's made, you know, under very difficult circumstances with a very, very low budget. The story is uh, female empowered in a really interesting way. It's the kind of thing about which people use that terrible phrase, elevated horror. And I just want to say, if you are... if never said those for No, you haven't, because you're an intelligent person of rare discernment. If anyone ever says elevated horror, stop it. Okay, just stop it. Elevated horror is a phrase that is used by nincompoops. There is no such thing as elevated horror. It is called horror. Is that like new country, which is just country? Just country, exactly, yeah. Well, elevated horror is a way of saying, well, it's you know, it's like it's like a horror film, right? But it's, it's elevated. It's got ideas. You go, yeah, like every horror film I have ever seen, even the worst horror films I've ever seen have got ideas in them. And I hate the fact that people... Elevated horror is the kind of term that is used by people who think they are above the horror genre, and it really annoys me. So don't ever refer to a film as elevated horror. It is not. It is horror. If I'm you're not going to email the show next week. You know what phrase to use. Yes, I'm not saying for one moment that the makers of this film use that. I, I don't believe for one moment that they have. But if there was such a thing, this is it. But it's, well, there isn't well, such a thing. There isn't such a thing. What it is is it's a film that's full of ideas. It's got a kind of... I mean, I love the. I love the the idea that it's been made by this family group making films are very much on their on their own terms it's got a very odd flavor to it i mean the the bit when they the bit when they're playing the rock numbers when we see them rehearsing in the basement and they're rehearsing this band that they're in with the two of them and it's mad it's kind of it's really interesting stuff and then you know obviously it's a coming of age story on the one hand and it's a feminist parable on the one hand and it's a kind of strange you know story about witchcraft and mythology on the one hand but it's it's all of those things and so much else i thought it was really impressive i found it really exciting i'm going to go straight back and watch um uh, the deeper you dig which is apparently also on shudder but i would definitely 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 recommend that you check out uh hellbenders because hellbender because it's a really interesting full of ideas very low budget very stripped down completely you know, committed to its, to telling its strange story. I really enjoyed it.